Dear God, today is going to be big. The most watched daytime service of the year. Over six million worldwide. If I were the king of the world. Welcome home, Dr. Gemstone. Your whole ministry is set up to serve the gemstones. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I ain't. Praise be to he. On guard, hireling. False Doctrine, Baptizing in Titles, in the Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hey, what's good, family? Blessings to you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me today. So today we're going to cover False Doctrine of Baptizing in Titles, the Name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, instead of the Name of Jesus. But first, let's pray and ask the, the Lord to open our eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all who you are, all you do, Lord. Thank you for this time and this day and this opportunity to teach, all led by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you for filling me. I pray that you speak through me, Lord, and that I get out of your way. I must decrease so that you increase and that you teach your people what you want them to see, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, so let's start with, praise God, let's start with Acts 2.38, the infamous. <clears throat> then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, which is the forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So here's Peter saying to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, the disciples, if you look at the totality of the Bible, they always baptize in the name of Jesus. They never baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And of course, I'll touch on that verse that when Jesus said to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we'll touch on that last. But you can see they always baptize in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is actually the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's a whole other topic. I'm going to do a video about that as well. And this is Peter speaking. So Peter was there when Jesus told them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the titles. So Peter was there and he's telling them he's baptizing everyone in the name of Jesus. Acts 19, 5 through 6. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So once again, you see that they baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, Luke chapter 3, verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So baptism is for the remission of sins. And it's also an outwardly declaration of faith being buried with Christ into the new man, being born again with Christ, being buried with him and then born again with Christ. Okay, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So it's showing the importance of being baptized for the remission of sins. It's not that baptism is, is a requirement, I think, for salvation. I don't think it's a requirement for salvation, but it is very important. I just had a dream two nights ago explaining to somebody how important it was to get baptized properly in the name of Jesus, not the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I, I'll give you a testimony here in a second. It wasn't the first time the Lord led me to do that because I actually got baptized improperly at first. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
for as many of you as have been as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, let's go Mark chapter 1 verses 4. Speaking of John the Baptist, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And remission of sins means forgiveness of sins. So a lot of people will, will just try to make repent sound like, oh, it's just a change of mind, a change of heart, which by definition it is. But they take away from the context that it's used in the Bible time and time again, which is for sins, for the remission of sins, repenting from sins. Just something to think about. Okay, Romans 6, verse 3. 3 through 6. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we're also resurrected with Christ. We're buried with Christ through the baptism and resurrect, resurrected with Christ. And uh, that's when we put on the new creature, become the new man, new creature. For if we've been planted, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So free will it goes back to once they always say the last video. We have a choice to serve sin, which you can't serve two masters. We're under we're under grace, but if you still feed in the flesh, you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Colossians two twelve, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Okay, here's the the crux of the matter, the infamous verse here, Jesus speaking. Uh, Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay, so let's, let's, chop, let's chop this up. Let's break this down, because this is where people get confused and, and create a whole false doctrine out of proof texting this verse. So we see how the apostles always baptized in the name of Jesus. Peter was here on this verse. He, he was present with Jesus when he said this. And Peter's the one who told him, baptize in the name of Jesus, not in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at it. Let's, let's break it down. Okay, so you see it says, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name. The name is singular. It doesn't say the names of the Father and the, the Son of the Holy Ghost. It's singular. It's the name of. It's one name, which is Jesus. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the uh, the elliptical clause. What does that mean? The elliptical clause after Holy Ghost, the two little dots. It indicates that one name is the name of each person of the triune, the three manifestations of one God. So the three are one, as the Bible states. But it's not the false definition of Trinity, which is three separate persons, like three gods. And when people have gotten that confused because of Catholicism has thrown that monkey wrench at us, watch out for their doctrines. They, they also baptize imp improperly, of course. So we've got to be careful who we're listening to. We've got to look at the origins of where these teachings are coming from. So you got the singular name, you got the elliptical clause, you got, these are titles. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all the titles of one being, one God. And Jesus is the name above all names. So, baptize in the name of Jesus, not in these titles. And a quick testimony. So, I, I uh, when I was new in Christ a few years ago, I attended this church. And they were baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they even gave me a a certificate that says my name baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit didn't say anything about Jesus on there we gotta be careful because who's, who's the great whore? Mystery Babylon the great whore, the harlot 
who is Jesus speaking about that? It's the Catholic Church. It's the Vatican. I love you Catholics. Don't get me wrong. I know some of you have great hearts. You really are believing you're serving in the right denomination, but we can't trust man and, and traditions of man. You have to pray about it. Even a high-ranking cardinal admitted that Catholicism is just pagan Babylon packaged as Christianity. So really, when you're praying to, to the Mother Mary of Catholicism, it's actually the Queen of Heaven, Isis, Aphrodite. Uh, there's, there's plenty of other names you could research. It's a false god. Not even praying to actually Jesus' mom, Mary, which you're not supposed to do that anyways, the Bible states. We don't venerate the saints. We don't pray to the dead. I'm going to definitely do another video on Catholicism and false denominations. You pray about it. Don't trust man. You trust man, he's, you're under a snare. You're under a curse. So a lot of these other denominations, they, they call them the daughters of the whore. Daughters of Babylon. Because they're, they're also teaching a bunch of false doctrines that stemmed from the Catholic Church. Take it to prayer. Don't trust what I'm telling you. Study the word and take it to prayer yourself. Okay, so what am I getting at here? Yeah, you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. So back to the testimony. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right, so uh, got baptized improperly in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But I did believe truly in my heart. And, you know, I prayed to Jesus at home and for the remission of sins. And I felt the Holy Ghost come upon me like fire when I admitted my sins to him and accepted Jesus as Lord. So I believe that was the Holy, ba the Holy Spirit baptism. I mean, the, you feel the fire of the Holy Ghost come through you. But as far as the water baptism, it was improper at first. And I didn't realize this until about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years later, the Lord showed me in a dream. And uh, a man of God came nearby to where I'll stand at here down in Houston. And the Lord showed me in a dream to go down there and get baptized properly. He showed me I was incorrect. So I went down there and got baptized properly in the name of Jesus. And what's funny is their opening sermon, it was a couple uh, a couple pastors, prophets, apostles, really. But they, uh, they actually were emphasizing how important it is to get baptized in the name of Jesus. And the Lord just showed me in a dream to go down there to get baptized by them in the name of Jesus, not the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the titles. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So then after that, a week later or so, the Lord led me to a video from a fellow believer. And it was uh, how to start sp uh, speaking in tongues. And I, I prayed for tongues before when I was baptized improperly. And I, I never started speaking in tongues. I was wondering why. So this time I did it proper after I got baptized properly and prayed to, to speak in tongues. I start I began to speak in tongues. And that's very powerful. It's very powerful. People undermine these gifts. Why, why wouldn't you want the Holy Spirit baptism and the gifts of the Holy Ghost? It's only going to increase you and, and help others out and help your walk with God. I'll do another video about that. So, uh, yeah, it's critical. God gave me a dream showing me I did it wrong. I got baptized wrong. I go get baptized properly in the name of Jesus. And then just recently, before I make this video, two nights ago, he showed me how important, I was telling somebody in the dream, how important it is to get baptized properly. Very important is what I said in the dream. It's very important. And those are God showing me, speaking through me to somebody, just trying to show me how important it really is to get baptized properly in the name of Jesus. So don't, don't trust my, don't take my word for it. Pray about it yourself. But the watchmen are here to warn the people and to, and to help provide the truth. What, what's on God's heart? What's the report of the Lord? So that's all I'm here for. I'm nobody. I'm nothing special. I'm just a messenger. Always take it to God yourself. So, we, so we're not wavering by every wind of doctrine, by all these false teachings. The Lord led me to start this series. And 
I'm not going to be 100% in these teachings. Nobody is. Even on the last series, the Lord corrected me on a few things after I released it, so I had to come back and uh, take out a few clips. The Lord corrected me. It would have been nice if it was before, but it was after the fact. So I did take out the parts that he did show me were incorrect. So we, we're all fallible. We all can err. We have to have a relationship with the Lord and be open for correction. Hallelujah. Okay. So for, those pe for the people that don't think Jesus is God, I'm going to do a separate video about that. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you one good verse real quick that's pretty pretty irrefutable. Isaiah 9, 6. We got to remember that God showed up as a bush, a burning bush to Moses, right? So his spirit, God, his spirit, he can manifest into anything he wants, including a human as Jesus. And then, of course, the virgin birth and all that. This wasn't a regular man. The full Godhead dwelled in Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. Holy Ghost is God. The Father is God. They're not three separate persons, though. That's the true definition of Trinity, which is false. Three separate gods. It's one God. The original definition of Trinity is false. They, I see they've changed it over the years so to still try to confuse people. But the, the true definition of Trinity is false. The three are one. It is one God, three manifestations, yes. But ultimately, it's, it's one God. The three are one. All right, so Isaiah 9, 6. And there, there's a ton of verses that, that prove that Jesus is God. And I'll cover that in another video. Okay, Isaiah 9, 6. And it's even titled in this, this study Bible, KJV study Bible, The Birth of the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It's talking about Jesus Christ. It's, super, it's obvious, right? What, what, was, what do they call Jesus? Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Jesus is God. God with us. Emmanuel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. Jesus is known as the Word. He is God. You, if you've seen that, he, what did he tell his disciples? Show, show, when are you going to show us the Father? He told them, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Or if you see me, you've, you've seen the Father. It's the Father manifested in the Son through Jesus Christ. Some verses will, will make it sound like, oh, he's just a man, like the Father is greater, and this and that. It was Jesus giving an example as a man. It wasn't taken away from his Godhood. I can see how people can be confused by that. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yeah, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Yahweh, Yohevah, Yahushua, Yahshua, Ruach HaKodesh, El Shaddai, Adonai, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Lord of hosts. It's all the same, one God. And then even if the name of Jesus, what does the name of Jesus mean? God saves, Yahweh saves, Jehovah saves. Is what Jesus means. Take it to prayer if, if you don't believe it. And there's, I'll give you plenty of other verses in another video. But uh, yeah, that sh that that should get you started if if you're in disbelief. I would hope to at least consider. We got, remember we got to have an open mind. We can't think we have all the answers like the Pharisees. The Pharisees, the highest minded people of all the lands, the high priests, the highest priests and teachers. And they didn't even, see, they couldn't recognize the Messiah. And look how Jesus was mocking them all the time with questions. So we really, 
just got to keep an open mind and open heart. We can't think we know everything. Got to pray. The Holy Spirit knows everything. Man doesn't know hardly anything. We can all agree on that, right? So anything I'm teaching, take it to the Lord. I erred just the other day, and I'm called to teach. I can still err. So take it to prayer. So I hope that uh, for anybody that's gotten baptized improperly in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the titles, take it to prayer. God's going to show you to get rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't received the Holy Ghost gifts, pray for the Holy Ghost gifts. Sometimes through prayer you can get it, or impartation, someone laying hands on you. The gifts are so crucial. Who, who wouldn't want with these heavenly spiritual gifts? It's such a blessing. It's going to help your walk. It's going to help others walk. It's going to help you, help you fruit. Okay, so I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor to have you with me. Don't trust man, trust God. Always go to God. My job is to always point everyone to the Lord. I hope this blessed you. I love you very much. God bless you. Take care. Uh, Holler in the comments if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. Peace be with you.